It is estimated 87% of real estate agents will fail within their first five years of being in the real estate industry. And I truly believe choosing the wrong real estate broker contributes to this. What's up guys, Steve with Steve Invest, helping real estate agents, brokers, investors, small business owners build their businesses with a path toward financial freedom. I got five main tips for you guys in choosing the right real estate broker from the beginning. And if you're trying to change brokers, these tips will help you out as well. Number one is do your homework. Go ahead and ask other real estate agents in your local market what their experience is with their brokerage, their broker, their office manager, their offices. Ask all the necessary questions. What do they like about their office? Um, how's the broker support? Does the broker answer their phone when, when, uh, they, when you need them? Um, so go ahead and ask around to local real estate professionals because they will divulge a lot of information for you guys. Another thing that you guys can do is ask family, friends, coworkers, anybody in your local market that has bought or sold real estate. Find out who that real estate agent was and if they had a good experience, bad experience. Find out exactly what their experience was like. If it was a good experience and they provided exceptional customer service and, and really did well in negotiations and so forth, they might have a really good real estate broker that is mentoring them and helping them out. So call that real estate agent up and, and ask the necessary questions about that broker, that brokerage, and their offices. Number two, and if possible, know the niche that you guys are gonna go into. I put a, a link down below for you guys. It's uh, 52 different niche markets that you can get into real estate, but I highly encourage you guys to really find out what direction you're trying to go into real estate. Are you trying to sell uh, cabin homes? Are you trying to sell golf course properties, waterfront properties, beach properties, you know, first time home buyers, you know, the list is endless. But try to find out exactly what niche market you're gonna go into because when you meet with these real estate brokers, and you kind of have a clear direction of really what you want to focus in on, you can explain, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm trying to go after waterfront properties, I want to list waterfront properties, how can you help me? And knowing that, um, and armed with that information, if, if the broker sits back and they're like, I, you know, I don't know, then that probably isn't the right real estate broker to go and, and join forces with. You want somebody that's like, hey man, we have, X, Y, and Z agents over here. We help them go from you know $100,000 a year to $400,000 a year in commissions, and all they do is sell waterfront property. We can probably link you up and start as a team with them, etc. So if you have a clear idea of what kind of focus you want to go after in the real estate game, then that's only going to help you choosing a, the right real estate broker that's going to back you up on that niche focus. The third tip and very important, go with your hunch. You know, you know when something doesn't feel right. You feel it in the pit of your stomach. You're like, oh, you know, it just, it doesn't feel good. And when you feel good, you know that too. So if you're, you know, interviewing real estate brokers and you're, you walk in and you know, the atmosphere is weird and that agent or the, there's multiple agents or the office manager or the broker made you feel uncomfortable or you weren't excited or whatever, just ditch it. Don't, don't give it a second thought. I mean, if anything that rubbed you the wrong way or you feel like, eh, you know what, I, I didn't like this about that, I'm telling you, go on your hunch. I've made so many mistakes in the past, whether I was joining forces with somebody or, or going into business with other people on certain ventures. I had a little something in me, in my gut that was telling me, you know what, uh, I don't know if I should do this. And that, that's with hiring people and so forth. So I've, I've run into those situations and I should have gone on my gut. And I can tell you guys, just, just listen to it and sleep on it. Don't make any rash decisions. Don't sign up right then and there. If you're being pressured into signing something, you probably want to uh, take a step back and, and really dissect it and, and go on your hunch. Go on your gut. Number four, remember, this is a two-way interview. What does that mean? You're interviewing them as well. You know, that broker wants to make sure that, you know, you're the right fit for their organization. You're going to hustle. You're going to stick to a schedule. You're going to overall make that organization money and not necessarily be a liability to that organization as well. So they're interviewing you, but at the same time, 
This is so important. This is so important to your success that you have a good broker, a good team, a good office that's going to support you and help you grow in this dire time, especially if you're a new real estate agent. You do not want to take a step backwards and have to search for another real estate brokerage, you know, a month, two months into it and kind of start all over. Um, I can tell you from personal experience, the agents that um, have come to us from another real estate brokers. They're down and out. They they tell me time and time again they didn't have the support, this and that, and they're down. Their heads are down. And you know it's on us as that new real estate brokers to give them a jump start and pump them up and get them excited because their bad experience was really going to push them out of the business. So don't let that happen to you guys. Make sure that uh, you're interviewing, you're asking all the right questions. Also, I'm going to put a link below and that's going to have all the um, necessary questions that you're going to ask every real estate broker that on every interview you go on, um, it's going to have every question for you guys to, to ask that broker. So you're armed with this information in advance and then you can compare notes. You know, if you interview three, five, seven, 20 real estate brokerages, at least you can keep organized and keep notes and, and not mesh them together. And number five, prepare, you know, get well rested. Don't go out the night before, um, you know, you might have multiple interviews in any single day, you know, two or three of them. So you want to be well rested. Uh, you want to dress the part. You want to, you know, smell good, look good. You want to be on your A game because again, if, if you find a good real estate broker that that's successful and, and you want to be a part of that team and they're great, you know, you want to present well as well. You want them to actually offer you a position. Um, so presentations, everything. So make sure you're out there looking good, smelling good, dressing the part. Also be early. I always say if you're 15 minutes early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. Again, if you're 15 minutes early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. So always be there a little bit early because that's going to show that you're punctual. I can tell you I've had multiple interviews with real estate agents and they were 10, 15, 30 minutes late. Um, some that go past 15 minutes, I just call and I tell them, you know, I'm on to my next meeting. Um, it, it, you know, they're not respecting your time. So you have to respect their time. Also, it works in reverse. If you're gonna go and interview a broker and they're extremely late, then walk out of that office. They're showing you that they're not respecting your time either. So always be early for every meeting. And this goes past just being early for uh, an interview. Uh, make sure every buyer, seller, whoever you meet with, make sure you're always on time uh, and that's 15 minutes early. And in preparation, make sure you have the interview questions that uh, uh, I link below. Um, that's just going to pre prepare you for a guideline. You guys can alter these questions. You can cross them out, which ones don't relate. Um, you can add to it as well, but at least you're going in armed and showing that broker that you're prepared because you know these are necessary questions that you want to learn about that broker. And uh, if that broker is not asking you questions, then you know, they they probably are not looking to help you. You know, the only way to help anybody is to ask questions. It's the same thing when you're going to work with a real estate buyer or seller. If you're not asking them the necessary questions, how can you possibly help those people? You can't. So this broker, whoever you're meeting, they, they should be asking you a series of questions. And if they're not, then you probably don't want to go and work for them either. As mentioned, links below, you got a series of real estate questions to ask for uh, your broker interview. So go ahead and download that it's in a PDF. Uh, there's more content, free content on that site as well. So check it out. As always, if you got one good thing from this video, you probably want to go ahead and subscribe. We have more videos coming out every single week on help, how to help grow your business. And um, I appreciate the support. Thanks. See you.